Assalamu alaikum. I welcome you again to my presentation. Today, I am going to present before you the second segment of Right from the Word. I am going to start my today's session with the rules of conditionals. And we all know that conditionals are inseparable part of our day-to-day -day conversation as well as of our writings. The rules of conditionals are also very important for solving the problem of right from work also. So with no more delay, I am going to start my today's session. Conditional sentence. Conditionals describe a certain condition and the effect or result of that particular condition. And in a conditional sentence, what we do, the if clause describes the condition like if you work hard and the main clause describes the effect or the result of that particular condition like you can achieve your goal. So here the condition is that particular person had to work hard. And what will be the result of his work hard? His hard work or the result of his hard work will be his achieving the goal. Conditional sentence are often divided into different types. And the first one that I am going to discuss is zero conditional. We use zero conditional to describe the things that are generally true, especially regarding natural facts, laws and rules. So zero conditionals are used for the general facts or the natural facts or the things that are normally true. The structure of zero conditional is if or when plus present simple or present indefinite and the second part or the next part will be written in present indefinite also. The example is if you make fire it creates smoke and we all know that whenever we make fire that creates smoke it's a natural fact. When the sun goes down, it gets dark. This is also a general truth or we can also call it an, an universal truth. So we use zero conditional to describe a thing which is naturally true or generally true to all and the verb in the both clause, uh, whether it is if clause or the main clause remains the same. That means uh, the both, both verb will be written in V1 or the base form of the verb. The second one we are going to discuss is the first conditional and we can also call it present conditional. We use first conditional or present conditional to describe a future situation which we believe real or possible. And the structure of present conditional or the first conditional is the if clause if the if clause is written in present indefinite, the second part or the main clause will be written like subject plus may, can, shall, will plus v1. That means the base form of the verb. I repeat, if plus present, the second part will be in future indefinite. If he runs in the rain, he will catch cold. And the second example is, if it rains, I will not go out. So here the condition is, if it rains, I will not go out. And this is possible also. And if this is very likely to happen. If it rains, it's my decision whether I will go or not. If you call me, I will come. Again, the condition is, if you call me, I will go. And if you call me, I will come. This is a, uh, this is a situation that, that is very likely to happen in reality. The next one that we are going to focus on is second conditional or first conditional. We use second conditional to describe an imaginary situation that is unlikely to happen. The difference between present or first conditional and second conditional is in the first conditional we describe a situation that is very likely to happen in reality that is that, uh, that is possible to happen but in second conditional or first conditional we describe a situation that is uh, quite imaginary and that is unlikely to happen in reality. And the structure of first conditional or second conditional is if plus first continuous and the second part or the main clause will be written with the help of would, would, might plus v1 or the base form of the verb. And the examples are if he came, I would go. Normally he had not come. But that one, I am expressing the situation that if he came, I would go. The second one. If I were, or I, I were a doctor, I could 
treat the poor. I am not a doctor, but I am imagining a situation or I am thinking of a situation that if I were a doctor, I could treat the poor. Uh, one a very important point to be noticed here, after if, if I were here, if I were, after if, in second conditional, after if, the B verb will always be oil if we describe an imaginary situation there. That means if we describe any unreal past or any imaginary situation, we use oil after any subject, whether it is I, we, he, she, they, any, any, any person or any person, we use the verb oil. I repeat, in second conditional, if we express or describe any unreal past, we use be verb oil for any subject. The next one, if I, if I had the wings of a bird, I could fly in the sky. The condition is, uh, normally I don't have the wings of the bird, but I am imagining a situation that if I had the wings, I could, I could fly in the sky. Another important thing we need to discuss or we need to know about second conditional is sometimes we can reply, replace the word if with the word had. And what is written there? If I had the wings. If I had the wings. Here, if can be replaced by the word had. And the structure will be had I the means of a word. <coughs> so, in second conditional, we can replace the word if by bringing the word had in the beginning of the sentence. So, the structure and the meaning will remain so. The, the, uh, the sentence is going to be, had I the wings of a bird, I could fly in the sky. Uh, next, we are going to focus on the third conditional or the perfect conditional. Third conditional is used to describe a situation in the past that did not happen and to imagine the result or effect of that situation. The structure will be if plus past perfect and we all know that the structure of past perfect is subject plus subject plus head plus B3. The structure of third conditional or perfect conditional is if plus subject plus head plus B3. If perfect tense is there with the if clause, the second part will be written with the help of would have subject plus would have would have or might have and definitely after all this have the verb is going to be B3. That means verb past, verb past participle form. And the example is going to be if he had gone there, he would have seen me. We know that he had not, the note is there, actually he had not gone there. This, this had not happened in the past. But we are thinking of that situation that if he had gone, he would have seen me. And another example is there, if you had studied well, you would have passed in the exam. Normally, we all know, in reality, you had not passed. But we are describing the situation that if you had studied, if we are adding in a condition that if you had studied well, you would have passed in the exam. Uh, very similar to second conditional, in third conditional also, we can replace the word if or the, or the conditional word if with the help of the word had. And, that, and, and the structure is going to be if I had owned a lottery. We can write the sentence like this. Had I own a lottery, I would have bought a new car. So, the things to be noticed is when we have brought this word had here, the word if is 
replaced but the meaning and the structure of the next part will remain the same had i won a lottery i could have or i would have bought a new car another example is had i been a millionaire i would have helped the helpless and the thing we need to focus on here is one very important thing we need to notice about the replacement of the word if with the help of the word had and if we focus on these two sentences in the first one had i been here had plus did he is there had i been a king so it will be a sentence of third conditional and the second part will be written with the help of would have would have or might have but in the second one here had is there but there is no verb inside that means this is the sentence of a second conditional had i the wings that means if i had the wings of a bird the second part will be written with the help of the word would would might plus v u v one that means i could fly in the sky the next rule that we are going to discuss is rule number 22 after all these words given in the slide let had rather had better would better would rather cannot part would not part do not does not did not we normally use the v1 or the base form of the word so we need to memorize all these words after all these words let had better had rather would better would rather cannot part would not part do uh, do does did we use present form of the <coughs> verb and the example is i would rather die than the correct form will be i would rather die than beg and another point to be noted here is the word the connectors then is there die then beg this connector always used to similar words if present form of the verb is uh, uh, the is if the first one is in present form or the base form the second one will also be in base form if ing is added with this one I will ing will also be added with the second one also. I had better go home by this time. So we have already discussed that after all these words, had better, had rather, would better, would rather, we use the base form or the blue one. So here the correct form is going to be I had better go home by this time. Next we are going to focus on rule number twenty-three. Normally. we use v1 or the base form of the verb after two two plus verb is called infinitive but there are some two that means there are some prepositional phrase after which we use v uh, plus ing or ing with the verb like addicted to adverse to be used to with a view to look forward to get used to accustomed to preferred to after uh, in in all these prepositional phrase there are two at the end and after these two we add ing with the main verb and the examples are tori went to london to get a job here this two plus verb is infinitive but in the second one we are looking forward to hearing from you here looking forward to after looking forward to we use ing with the base form and the next example is i went to the stage with a view to dancing again after the phrase with a view to we have added ing with the base form next we are going to discuss rule number 24 preposition after all preposition except two we use ing with the base form or we can use noun form also and the examples are television is an important source of entertainment here the word entertainment is written in noun form or entertaining television is an important source of television is an important source of entertainment here the word entertainment is a noun and the word entertaining is adding ing with the base form the second example children are fond of 
using mobile phone. Here we have added ing with the main verb use after the preposition of. The next example. Rina is busy in doing her homework. In plus verb plus ing in doing. The next one. Helen is neglected for speaking foolishly. For plus v one plus ing. That means for speaking. Next rule number twenty five is about. If we find it is time, it is high time, wish or fancy in any sentence. we use v2 or past form of the verb in that sentence that means after it is time it is high time wish and fancy we use the v2 or the past form of the verb and the example is it is time you finished a course on english language i wish i own the first prize in the lottery i fancy i flew among the stars the meaning of the word fancy is to imagine something impossible and after fancy we use v2 or the past form of the main verb so that was all from my part today we will meet again with the next part of my topic till then stay fine and stay safe thank you